Today, I'm going to show you exactly how to do a Greek word study using a free online tool. That's coming up next today on The Beat. Hey, my friend, welcome to The Beat. My name is Alan Parr. Thank you so much for tuning in. If this is your first time here on this channel, we answer frequently asked questions about the Christian faith. We talk about dating and relationships from a Christian perspective, and we do all sorts of other Bible-based videos as well. So if you're new, consider subscribing. So whenever you are studying the Word of God, it can be very helpful to be able to read the Word of God in the original languages in which it was written, which are Hebrew, Aramaic, and Greek. So to help you better understand the value of this, let's say you are watching TV at home, and if you're watching in black and white, you can still get the basic idea of what is going on. You can figure out the story, but there are certain things that you may not notice or understand unless you watch in color like this. So now that you're in color, you can see certain details, certain things that you did not see whenever you were watching in black and white. Well, it is the same whenever you're reading your Bible. So if you just read the English translations, yes, you'll be able to get a very basic and good idea of what the passage is saying. But whenever you can read in Greek and Hebrew and you know what the words mean, then you can see details in the past of scripture that you would not have normally seen. So if you enjoy this particular video, I actually have a six hour self-paced online course that will take you way deeper than this short video will show you all sorts of tricks, strategies, and techniques for studying the word of God for yourself. I would love it if you would join me in that group and also on the Facebook community as well. If you're interested, I'll put a link in the description box below. So let's head over to the computer and let's see how this is done. Okay, so what you want to do is you want to head over to a website called BibleStudyTools.com. It is a free website. You are free to use any of the online resources on this site. And then you want to go over to the Read tab and click on that tab and go down to where it says Interlinear Bible. Now, you may want to use the King James Version. That is fine. I'm going to choose the New American Standard Bible. And whenever you do that, you want to type in the scripture reference that you have some interest in determining what one of the words in that verse actually means. I'm going to choose 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1. So let us say you are studying the book of 1 Corinthians, which happens to be one of my favorite uh, books in the Bible. And uh, by the way, there's a lot of ads on this website. You have to kind of get past that. But then if you go down to chapter 7, verse 1, and you read this scripture, and it says, Now concerning the things about which you wrote, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. And you're thinking, wow, that is a bit extreme. It is good for a man not to touch a woman? Is, is Paul saying I shouldn't shake a woman's hand? Is he saying that it's wrong for me to bump into a woman? Is it saying it's wrong for me to give a woman a hug? Like what exactly is he saying when it says it's good for a man not to touch a woman? Well, if you click on this word touch, it is actually going to bring up the actual Greek word hapto and the meaning of this word. And if you want to hear how the word is sounded out, then you can actually hit this little button right here and it's going to say hapto. So you can hear how the word is sound. So the word touch here is actually a lot deeper than what you would think. It actually means the following, to fasten to, adhere to, to fasten fire to a thing, to kindle, to set of fire. So this word does not just simply mean physical touch. It actually means touching a woman with the purpose of lighting a fire inside of her, hence touching her with the purpose of igniting sexual desire within her. Now, you can also see other uses of this word in the New Testament right here on the side. And let me click on one of them, because some of them it really does just mean touch, but other times it means something more than that. And you can see in the book of Acts, chapter 28, verse 2, it says this, The natives showed us extraordinary kindness, for because of the rain that had set in and because of the cold, here it is, they kindled a fire and received us all. So that little phrase here, kindled a fire, is the same word that Paul used in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1, to let us know that it is not a good thing for a man to ignite a sexual fire within a woman unless they are married. Okay, here is another example. Let's say you're studying the book of James, chapter 1, verses 3 and 4, and you get to these verses, and it says, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. Then verse four, then let endurance have its perfect result 
so that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. And you're saying, wait a second, what is James actually saying here? Is it possible for Christians to be perfect, right? To be without any fault of any kind? I thought Jesus was the only one that was perfect. So let's see what this word perfect actually means. So you click on that word, and it's actually the Greek word teleos. And we can see here that it actually means that which is perfect. When it's talking about men, though, it means full-grown adult of full age or mature. So it is actually saying that whenever you allow trials to come into your life, whenever you allow difficulties to develop you, Essentially, what it does is it makes you a more well-rounded Christian. It makes you a more mature Christian, a more full-grown Christian, rather than being somebody that just knows a lot of word and knows a lot of Bible and has a lot of facts stuffed in your head. Instead, experience and uh, trials and the difficulty of those trials will produce an endurance within you to be able to endure more trials. And James is saying, whenever you get to that point, all of this is part of the maturing process that God has in place for you. So all of that was what we were able to get out of just one simple word in this passage. Okay, so for our final example, I'm going to go to 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, one of my favorite verses in the entire Bible. And if you read it, it says, all scripture is inspired by God and is profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness. Now, the question is, what in the world does this mean? All scripture is inspired by God, right? What, what, what in the world does it mean it's inspired by God? Did God write the Bible or did man write the Bible? Did he just inspire in the same way that um, writers are inspired or songwriters are inspired? What exactly does this word mean? Uh, so if you click on this word inspired, you will see that it is actually the Greek word theopneustos. And uh, the reason why I wanted to do this one is because this is actually a compound word. And you can see that here because it's going to say from 2316 and a presumed derivative of 4154. So you say, okay, wow, this is an interesting word. And also notice that this is the only use of this word in the entire Bible, which is the idea that Paul actually combined two words and created a whole new word, right? And let's see what this word actually means. Now, if you go down here and you just stop at the definition that says inspired by God, you're saying, hey, that doesn't tell me anything. That's the same words that the English translation says. Oh, but let's look at what these two Greek words mean. So if you click on 2316, you will see that the first word, theos, is the word for God. So uh, first part of this compound word, theos, means God. And then if you go back and you click on the second word, 4154, you will see that this is the Greek word nu, from which we get the word for the Holy Spirit, pneuma, which is wind or breath or to breathe. And so when you put these two Greek words together, theos, which means God, and nu, which means wind or breath or to breathe, it actually means God breathed. So that gives us a better picture of how God inspired the New Testament writers to write the Word of God in Old Testament as well. He literally breathed into them the exact um, words and ideas that he wanted them to convey as he was communicating to them uh, his word to them and ultimately his word to us. So I hope that you found this video helpful. If you did, I wanna encourage you to just go over to the landing page and check out what is waiting for you inside of this course. Spend some time praying about it and just ask God to lead you as to whether it is his will for you to enroll in this course. I would love to see you on the inside. If you like this video, hit the like button. Don't forget to share it with your friends. Be sure and subscribe. Check out some of the other videos on this channel. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time on The Beat.